wouldn't be fair to say that's a new sound, because that sounded like Tony Tennille when you sang uh, Let's Do It. Yes. But it's a new approach. Yeah, it is a new approach, and uh, it's actually music that I feel I was born to sing, and I'm finally getting my chance. You mean love will keep us together? <laughs> You weren't born to sing my favorite record? Well, of course I was. Oh, okay. And I love Love Will Keep Us Together and Must Grant Love and You Never right. Done It Like That and all that. But my dad was a big band singer in the late 1930s. He sang with the Ben Pollock Orchestra, oh, which what? became Bob Crosby's Bobcat. Sure. And he is a fine singer and a lover of music. And every other day when I was a kid, he'd come home with a new album by Frank Sinatra or Sarah Vaughan or Ella Fitzgerald. And this is what I was raised on. This was, was my music. And of course, even when I became a teenager, I was listening to Earth Angel, the great pretender like everybody else. But still, jazz was always my favorite. And my but then when you and the captain went out and started performing in exactly. the little clubs before the hits, mm -hmm. you weren't doing the standards. No, no, because nobody, that, that wasn't happening at that time. You know, that was considered kind of old hat. People were listening to top 40 type things and pop music. And that's what we sang uh, in the clubs. And that's what we had our hits with. So, of course, when you start having a lot of hits, uh, and you go to your record company and say, hey, how about if I record an album of George Gershwin? They go, mm, forget it, you know. Really? Oh, yeah. They said, don't rock the boat. Just keep recording happy little pop tunes and we'll all go to the bank. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what we did. How did you, how did you get so far away from their advice on this album? Well, it, it, it took a lot of, of talking and a lot of struggling. We've been through a couple of record companies since then. Um, and I, to each one, I have mentioned the same thing. And finally, Daryl and I had been with CBS for the last couple of years, and we've just not come up with anything that they have been happy with. They'd always listen and say, oh, it just misses. Why don't you go back and try again? So after you hear this for a couple of years and you don't have anything on the top pop charts, I said, hey, how about now? Why don't I do it now? And they said, oh, nobody wants to hear that music. So then Linda Ronstadt came out with What's New and started selling like hotcakes. But look how she had a fight, too. Well, she fought, so. I'll tell you, but she is so, she has been such a big star for so long. She had so much clout, she was able to force it through where I was unable to do that. So when Linda had sold about 500,000, was still going strong, <laughs> I went back to the company again. I said, how about now? And their reply was, well, this is probably a fluke. A fluke, yeah, right know? away, yeah. So that's when I talked to Daryl and I said, Daryl, we've got to go for this. We've got to do it somehow. So we did, Murph, essentially what we did with Love Will Keep Us Together to start our career, we did it ourselves. We raised $70,000 from private uh, financial people. We went into the studio. We recorded the album in two days, two six-hour sessions. It was done live. Uh, there were no the band missing. was right the there band was as there, you sang. 43 pieces, the strings, it was heaven. That is so inspiring. It was. Oh, it was great. And we recorded it, and two weeks later, we sold it to Mirage Atlantic, and it'll be on, on the streets. It's on the streets right now, and it's I'm thrilled. Better it again. should be in the shops, not on the streets. It street. should be in the shops. Yeah. It's in the shops. Right. <laughs> Good. So we did it ourselves, and uh, that just shows you that you have to do it sometimes yourself. Sure. Sure. But nobody believes you, and you feel positive. Yeah. That's where the great, the great strengths come. I think so. You betcha. The song you're going to do now is a Gershwin song. Yes, and uh, as I understand it, it's the last song that George Gershwin wrote before he died. He right. died very young at, at age 39. He left us wonderful music, but there's so much more to go. But this one, if he never wrote another one, this, this is one a, is my favorite. With a lyric by Ira. Yes, by Ira. Okay, here's Tony Tennille from her new album, Our Love Is Here To Stay. Yeah. 
Yeah, bro. 